Hello everyone. This is Amber Two Thousand here. Welcome to my channel. Well, I play a variety of games and do new relations for fanfics. I'm really hoping you you enjoy my content. If you do, make sure to comment below. Leave a like. And subscribe with the lower case and so on. Right, until next time, this is Amelie2000. Welcome to my channel. So, hi. The only option left, Chapter 13 Brokenness. There was a certain widow in full that needed to be between. When it was, she was behind the wheel. The car wasn't going at least five miles per hour over the speed limit. It made the older girl feel uncomfortable. It was her mission to rapidly get from point A to point B. And if she didn't have the toddler in the car, she didn't worry about the suggested numbers on the sign. Her wife was particularly particular about making good time doing world trips as well. But Matt made it clear she wasn't too afraid about breaking the wall. She never actually said anything negative about Chloe's diving. However, the bond could just tell that her partner felt uneasy by the way she tense and braced her body during soft turns and around steep, cur steep curbs because of the speed and the lack of traffic during the late hour. The trip to Seattle was much quicker than the trip to the hometown earlier that day. During the journey back, Chloe listened more than she spoke for a change. The love of her life went on and on about how much Kate being alive meant to her and how nice it was to see Victoria beaming with joy. Master's voice always strewed her worries and was the driver's all-time favorite thing to hear. And when someone was excited or inspired, it melted in Chloe's heart. She was more than happy to remain silent so the beautiful brunette in the passenger seat could verbally process her sphere emotions. She also suspected her wife wasn't, wasn't simply glad to have her friend back. She knew the girl felt like a dream of responsibility listening from her shoulders. They made peace with their past long ago. But a newly discovered survivor of the storm had a profound impact. Chloe assumed that when they arrived at the Carlfield's house, they, it would feel normal and familiar. They lived most of their adult lives under that roof and hadn't been completely moved out for more than a few days. She felt like a guest as they pulled into the driveway and got out of the subway. Instead of walking in, as they had for many years, Chloe stood beside her partner and watched her reach outward while her partner fainted and reached the doorbell. It didn't take long for Vanessa to appear and invite the girls inside. Once, the, once past the front entryway, Master's Bob gave them each hugs and offered purposes. No thanks, Vanessa. We need to pick up Destiny and hurry home so we can get some sleep. Where is he anyway? Chloe bobbed her head left then white, clinging around in search of her daughter. She's passed out about an hour ago, Vanessa responded, then crossed her arms at her chest. Why don't you go stay here tonight? We invaded the ill masters because Destiny wanted to have a stroller party last night. She reminds me so much of you when you were her age, sweetheart. The older woman chuckled after lightly placing her hand on the brunette's shoulder. That should work. Matt yawned. We're pretty tired anyway, and if he sees asleep, we don't want to wake her up. What do you think, Crow? She saw me prohibited to the side and straight her person on around the taller girl's leaned lower back. Yeah, that works. 
Koi nodded her head. She was a bit disappointed that she wouldn't be able to hold the title the right way, but he knew it was for the best. Go on now, Vanessa began, slipping behind and gently push, pushing them on the shoulders to the sails. Your own room will even be my awesome classroom, but, but for now, it's the playroom. The old master's on the floor beside the crib. You girls can get, get ready for bed and grab some fresh seats from the linen closet. Chloe noticed the master's ball being more chatty than usual. Then she remembered what wine Privy said. Vanessa went out with friends to a wine and painting party, and she was probably still feeling a buzz at least a little. How was the paint party? How drunk are you like about now? Chloe drunk behind a wig and a grin. Oh, I'm not drunk anymore. Vanessa smirked. Just kidding. I felt pretty good earlier though. Wine well, fell asleep, but I wanted to see you when you got home. Make sure you made made it it made it in safely. The woman took a deep breath, and then asked her with a goofy grin on her face. I love you girls so much, and I would do any, and I would do anything for you, you know? Chloe thought about her mother-in-law, and her mind dropped back to the note mass world that saves Rachel's life many years back. It was the beginning of a chain of events that took the cha- choice at the lighthouse away from her and her wife. Which aimlessly saved a two-year-old daughter from getting shot. If the Vanessa had it sent the letter they wrote during the photo job, there's no telling where they would have ended up. Now, they were c- closing in on what she believed would be their end game to the last few crazy years. Chloe! Master's raised voice gave her a shot. Don't wake Destiny! Vanessa tossed it was first. I said your name five times, babe. Where were you? The brunette had her hands on her as wet, buzz eyes and pressed lips. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about the letter Vanessa sent me on my 19th birthday. You know, the one we wore to ourselves when we were kids. Not sure why that memory popped in my head. I was so glad I found it. The little woman beamed. It was the least I could do. Do you know how bad I feel about keeping you two apart? Had we known at the time what you meant to each other, you, you better bet things would have been different. Matt stepped over and pulled her mom into a side hug. We love you, Mom. Everything worked out, so we can't complain. You give us a place to live and so does so much love since then. Matt stepped over and pulled her mom into a side hug. We love you, Mom. Everything worked out, so we can't complain. You give us a place to live and so does so much love since then. Don't beat yourself up for what you happened when we were kids. You did what you thought was best at the time. Also, I need the sour badly. So you release her mom's waist and straight over to Chloe to quickly pet her white on the cheek and then disappeared upstairs. Guess I should head on up too. Chloe awfully mumbled on wanting her fingers through the messy hair on the back of her head. She could hear the water turn on in the upstairs bathroom and a desire to enjoy her best friend that washed through her. Why don't you don't you well, why don't we sit down in the chair for a bit? I'm not quite ready for bed and could use some company. I never really got much of a chance to talk. Just you and me. Vanessa turned and walked towards the kitchen, taking a seat at the bar area. She looked back towards her daughter-in-law, waiting for the blonde to join her. You sure? Chloe asked as she approached the kitchen area. I'll probably sneak. We sort of, well, stripped down in the mug earlier. Had to change clothes and everything. She felt an oil of awfulness she hadn't felt in some time. 
Vanessa was right. Over the last few years, living under the same roof, they were really together, just the two of them. Corey told her so it was a matter of randomness. Instead of a no sense of ways that a world's will, she found her mother-in-law alone with her. If she weren't being completely honest, though, she knew it was her who went out of her way to avoid the woman. It wasn't that she didn't like her. She just wanted to avoid uncomfortably forced conversations. You don't seek. Vanessa shifted her weight on the soul as Coyce took a seat. So... The wind paused for a moment. We'll pull you to the last few days. We always lost our granddaughter for you when you need it. But this felt secretive and a little strange. Coy handled her eyes at wood, trying to find the right words to say without opening a can of worms. She didn't want to lie to her wife's mom, but she needed to choose the proper words to use to avoid a conversation about the multiverse and time travel. Well, we... Um, she knew she was mumbling or would need to figure out some, something quickly. She decided to go with the store and no more voice at a waste of events. We went back to a camp bay and visited the new lighthouse. The cemetery, saw my dad's grave, you know, to see some final culture from that place. But just above her head as Chloe spoke, so she knew the woman believed her. And she felt proud knowing lies were really necessary. She hated the dreadful and selfish person she used to be before a mask came back into her life. She talked self loading years ago, but would never forget the way she acted as a teen. Thankfully, the call filled places balanced each other out and, and made one another whole. As he grew older, thoughts about the love they still brought a tear to her eye and softened her heart. Oh yes! Closer is good. It allowed you and Matt to finally fully move on with your lives. I know there's a lot of memories and badness you two carry from your time there, but if it weren't for those moments, things might have been different for you. I'm just so happy you two fell in love and, and all. As you well will, we will worry about all her when she was here in Seattle after we left. Corey stretched and turned her head. What do you mean you were worried? She understood that her wife wasn't happy after leaving at KMB, but she didn't know her parents were really concerned about her. In her mind, they took her away, causing unnecessary hurt and strain between seeing mass. Yeah, she was aloof and disengaged. Her mind wandered uh, and we noticed she couldn't focus or concentrate on any uh, w one thing. We knew she was super smart, but we considered putting her on Lactitin or some other treatment plan. We only decided to let it all play out and just hope she figure everything out. Do you know why? Do you know why we didn't go with a medical plan? The bond straightened for a moment, but I had no idea why her partner's parents wouldn't put her on a medication, and they thought it might help. I don't know. Maybe she was traumatized by the fact that you whip her apart from me, and ever since she ever knew White would see had lost a father figure, and needed me the most. So fucking refused. Her voice was raised when her application was apparent. It was like her attention to get upset about what happened when they were children. She just knew if she and Mass were faced with a similar situation, they would never make destiny move away like Mass was forced to. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. It's okay, Chloe. You're still wild about what happened. Maybe you always will be. I don't blame you, though. Mass is our only child, and we thought we knew what was best for her. Turns out, parents can really only guess what they think is best. You do white sometimes, and you get it wrong sometimes. In this case, 
we got it very warm, but the middle is got warm and pause and took a long fill down here. So we was an airy side, then place a hand on Chloe's shoulders and most lossily sees, looking into her eyes. It was a photography that sort of she could find her passing. We saw her smile again and seemed generally happy behind the camera. Phoebe appeared fine for a while, but but even that was evenly not enough. Vanessa lifted her hand from Chloe's shoulder and slipped it around the soul until one was centered in front of one another. You know, when we decided to let her go to Blackwell, all she could talk about was reconnecting with you, Chloe. When you did finally restore your friendship, she found her missing piece. It was a photography that helped ground her. But it doesn't take an advance to wait to see that your influence made her complete and whole. She always had a had the eye for taking amazing pictures, but your love pushed her to realize her full potential. See her go from a struggling high school student with an IP, IEP plan to a world famous successful photographer? It fills me with overwhelming joy. I don't think she would ever realize her dreams without you. So, I guess, thank you for showing our little girl that the love we believe she deserves. You two are so perfect for one another. We couldn't have planned a better for her, but a person for her. I didn't, but if I if I didn't believe in soulmates before, you girls definitely make a believer out of me. Not knowing what else to do, and being filled with energetic love, the bond of what we. Strip her arms around Vanessa up her torso and shoulders, leaning in for a hug. She blinked rapidly as the foaming tears began going to slightly burn her eyes. She haven't realized how much she needed to hear those words of approval from her mother-in-law until that moment. She knew the woman had no issues with her and her wife's relationship. She just didn't know how deeply she felt. Thank you for the talk, Vanessa. I mean it. I'm gonna go upstairs and check on my girls. Have a good night. Oh, and drink plenty of water. You think yourself in the morning. Good night, Chloe. Hope you know we love you all. Yeah, I know. Love you too. Chloe stood and turned towards the lady we were speaking with. From what, what? From what just occurred as he approached the stairs and sent it towards the bathroom, she didn't hear the water running. Mass must have already finished her shower, she figured. When she entered the bedroom door open and peered through the gaps, she immediately saw the two favorite people snuggled together on the air mattress asleep, and it was the most beautiful sight she ever seen. Not wanting to disturb them, she quietly jumped in the shower and washed off. But she walked back in the bathroom, fully clean. Her wife was guggily moving the daughter to her crib. The child was tenderly caught her note into in the brunette's arm. And Matt gently laid out her down and put the, pulled the blanket up over, cover over her body. When the shorter girl took Turned towards her wife, she made the shh sound with a pointer over her mouth while she pushed lips. In the dim moonlight that was pissing its way through thinly vein currents, mass strained over and spread both arms around her partner's neck. With a tiptoe and an upward tilt of her head, she softly pressed her lips against Chloe's waist. Sister, this Earl Vinzi. It didn't surprise the tall girl that her wife wanted to feel his person. She just didn't, just wasn't expressing it with the daughter, just a couple of feet from where they stood. After pulling back, Cody took Master's left hand and kissed her wing finger, swinging at the tip and ending at her wedding band. You're so beautiful, love, she whispered. 
best thing I ever done in my life was marrying your sassy ass. The subtle girl came around, looking at the old masters and back towards the, her best friend. I want you right now. Right here. Right now. On this record, Chloe was playfully noticed, flopping backwards on the mesa's bed. The swimming wobbly sound of the sniffing mouth slip was much louder than e- either girl anticipated. My mask dropped on top in a struggling position anyway. They realized quickly that they could turn and the noise would wake the sleeping toddler. So the girl on top purposely toppled over and landed softly on her side. The girls sternly kiss and grope one another until the intensity dirt to lighter testers. Chloe traced masses of freckles like she always loved to do, while Mass twisted a strain of Chloe's still wet blonde hair between her soft, well soft fingers. The eyes mainly stayed rock on one another with the casual gaze towards the crowd. Chloe. The genu- glorious Fergal girl quietly spoke, breaking the lengthy silence. We spent so many years in this room. We're here together. I study for my GED. You surprised me by starting in free. We brought our daughter home for the first time. And we had so many other amazing memories in this place. But it's super weird to be back. Don't you think, babe? Yeah, for sure. We were about only a few days ago, but it feels like a damn eternity since we lived here. Speaking of the past few days, how do you think Des is doing? I mean, I don't want to seem too worried, but... You know, I love that damn girl. I wish she might be in over her head. Me too, Quo. I'm glad you said that. She needed my power to get home less than 48 hours ago. Now she's off to some unknown place to fix everything? I don't know. She has been gaining strength and confidence. But what if she wasn't ready? Did you? Did we have to go to the seminary to you right away? We could have spent the next several weeks preparing. Feels like we might have moved too quickly. I don't think so, Mass. You said Rachel told you it, w- it had to be in her idea to pull this off. If we would have encouraged her to hold back and, and not do this now, it could have been very bad. Yeah, I know you're right, but maybe our goal is to simply sit back and hope things work out. I was thinking, well, I tried something before you came to bed. Mass Powers and Cody knew her what. Knew her wife was worried about her next words, so she moved her fingers from a favorite person's face and ran a hand through her soft blonde hair. She noticed the girl pivoted her hips over and, and flipped around to her back. She saw that, sailed up the ceiling as she continued. Chloe's eyes sailed on her uh, all, all the while. I had an idea when we were driving back from Akea Bay. I think we might be able to see this inside our minds, or if we can see his cheddar. And if that's the case, maybe we could turn her in and give her advice or something. Since our love created, created her, I think we should be able to find her connection inside of us. I searched right after my shower, but I think we might have to do it at the same time. I couldn't find her on my own. I thought I had it for a second, but no. Why was it so how she feel about entering the mind space again? On one hand, Mass was white. It seemed like it was the only option left if they were to help the daughter who could be anywhere at that point. On the other hand, it felt more dangerous than before somehow. Let me get this straight. You want us to go back go into the mind space? Find this connection. Is there and tunnel into her mind and try and help her any way we can? If we can do it, I think we should. Master's stirring voice had a bit of er- airs to it, coming across as thoughtful and determined. It felt a little intense. We would, we would never forgive ourselves if we didn't try, and then something terrible happened to her. 
we're not even sure what she's going through right now, you know? What is her part in this besides being able to travel through time and between universes? The girl's face was going from the moonlight. She looked lovelyous and winging it from her angle on the, on the ale mattress as the pale light spread across the room's mostly veiled walls. How about this, love? Corey responded, so marveling at her wife's beauty. Let's take a bag about what we know. Okay. So, we know there was a plan from another version of you in a wheelchair who is working with countless other versions of us to fist chains. We just said we created the multiverse and then it sold us a handful of others. It might sound weird, but... At first, it just seemed like they were so far away that it didn't really matter what happened to them. But I felt more and more connected to every single one, and I saw who they were and what they were going through. But that first letter, before I jump, said the main goal was to make it so every mass society it is to save every Chloe and Tutor over K Bay. But, like, is that still even possible? Please don't take this the wrong way, but even you chose both. Feels like the Fibro were quite in the grand tree of things, to be honest. I would never even choose the world over you right now, Well, Fuck that. We know more now than we did then. And without you, there is nothing in this life for me. She reached down to the size and interlocked fingers for her soulmate. Yeah, but I beg you to do it. I was ready to die in that moment. I prayed for you to let, let me go. Because I finally understood how selfless I had been. It was before we knew anything about the cycle, the water, and all the other shit that was happening. We had reconnected and you sold me an unconditional love that I thought I never deserved. At the, at the time, it felt like the right thing to do so others could live. You'll always be a hero to me, Quill. You're so brave for the sake of everyone else. After all you, your been through, I couldn't ever sacrifice you. Never. My point is, you did at one time. I made a damn good case not knowing about the other stuff. What could death do that would convince you to not listen to me? Like, a thousand times. I don't even know if the leader of the fucking plan knows what she's doing. I don't know, love. I'm worried. Not only that, Mass added. The spots letter of the cemetery didn't even come from her. It came from the coin that death saved when she first grits. He's now apparently one of the main players in this whole thing. The brown haired girl paused momentarily and turned back to her side, locking eyes with Chloe. Babe, let's try to curl in. It's tough to describe, but I really think she needs us. I just don't want to be in La La Land or whatever, whatever, or whatever, and Destiny needs us back here. What if she wakes up and we are not able to return? That was so ass. Koi moved her her whole hands to her mouth and began kissing Master's finger, fingers, awaiting the brunette's response. I know it's cheesy to say, but every time we've been faced with a situation like this, we followed our hearts and made the right decisions. Everything in my heart is telling me we have to do this. It all work out. Trust me. It feels like everything we've done has led us to this point. We need to help Jess do whatever she needs to do. I definitely trust you, Master. I trust you more than I trust myself or anyone else. If you say we need to do this, I'm all in. I'm not sure how this will turn out, but fuck it. Let's go. Let the girls try away. Help each other stand and walk over to the crib and turn the kiss of sleeping daughter and made their way back towards the mattress. They didn't lay back down, however. Mass put her back against the wall beside the door and stripped down to a sitting position. 
Chloe followed and did the same. The married couple leaned in and hold each other's faces, passionately kissing each other like it was the last time they ever would. It was sloppy, gutsy, and meaningful. Then they pulled back and without words, the lover agreed it was time to go. Chloe watched her partner close her eyes and assumed she was already searching for the spot where her power resided. She did the same and located the sloppily sweet spot. Instead of pressing, she gripped the, the mouth and pulled up wood. As she remembered, an entire universe of sorcery and lives short of muscle in an endless expanse of black and darkness. She immediately noticed the pink wrist and approached it, reaching her hand outwards to feel its radiance. Chloe! She heard Master's voice whisper some silver in the depths of her mind, halting her movement towards the pink wrist. We have to find Dust's energy. Search around and see if you can locate it. Wait! Then it will go and what these spoke. I think I found it! Chloe frankly looked around, but nothing stood out in, in, out beyond what she was already saw. It's red, Chloe! I don't see anything, Mass! How me get there? Where do I go? Since I carried her inside of me as a baby, it might be why I could feel her energy more in it easily. If I touched it, you'd be able to find her. Look around, babe! I'm missing out now! Shit! There it is! So now it's a red oil and lit in the distance, and Chloe followed the girl, pressing through it in a swimming front soap motion. She could feel the warmth of its radiance when she arrived, and she slowly stretched her arm out and grabbed her with her hand. A really, nearly overwhelming surge of wind rushed through her and all around her, causing a strain from every muscle on her body. She treats her eyes tightly and brightness engulfed the void, which could be seen through her shut eyelids. Mom? Mom? The shrieky voice pressed through the stream wind pressure, which was rapidly receding like water rushing down a hill. The trip seemed almost instantaneous, and Chloe felt like they had been gone for an eternity. Tess! Sit! Are you okay? Master's voice was a quail and she knew they successfully tumbled in. Fuck! Feels like I'm being whipped apart! Help me! Chloe opened her eyes and everything was still a blur. Moving through her teenage daughter's barely crack eyelids, she could make out the older wheelchair bound version of herself with her fingers set on a large green button and surrounded by complex machinery and computers. Her mouth was hanging open as she watched Dessa's reaction to whatever was happening. Chloe! Mass called out at the top of her yawns. On the count of three! Fully open your power! We gotta help her! Sight was blurred, sound was muffled, and her head was still streaming. But in that moment, she knew exactly what to, what to do. One, two, three! She opened her power with four breaths and felt herself being turned from death and mass. So, so sweet, her heart broke, her mind shattered, and the world went break from a distance. Darkness. Science. Nothingness. Hi, how are you everyone? This is the Magic 2000 again. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Because, you know, I, I really did enjoy making it. But, So I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, and subscribe with the notifications on down below. Till next time, bye!